Hi, this is Ed Gregory for PhotosInColor.com and today I'm going to show you how to reduce noise in your photos using the Photoshop and Lightroom plugin by Nick Collections called Define, which is now free. Theme tune. Do 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 do. Wobble like a jelly, jelly wobble. That was my jelly wobble. So. Yesterday we announced that the Nick Collection is now completely free. So today we're going to, this is part number two, where I'm going to show you how to use Define 2, which is this plugin, what it's called, and how to reduce the noise in your image. We're starting with this one because this is probably the first one that you would use in your process. Now, side note, if I look a little sunburnt, that's because I got sunburnt today, I went slacklining, and you would know that if you follow me on Snapchat, and if you don't, Here's my snap code, three, two, one, there it is. So let's jump into Lightroom and Photoshop and have a look at Define 2 and work through it. So, this is the image that we're going to use today. Now I'm gonna show you first of all in Lightroom, so this is the image, if you wanted to use Define 2 in here, all you have to do is, sorry, you just have to right click on the image and then you go edit in Define 2. Super simple. Now, if you wanted to do it in Photoshop, and that's what we're gonna do it in today, you, there's two ways of doing it. You could just um, export to Photoshop and then do it in Photoshop, or you could open as smart object in Photoshop. And what that will allow you to do is later on, you can actually go back and make any of these adjustments again. Define 2, not so important, but some of the other plugins it might be. So let's go over to Photoshop, which is just here and we will be using this image. It's an image of me. You can actually download this image if you wanted to work along. You can get it from stockpick.com and the image is called Man Feeling Happy Outside. Uh, that's my stock photo website that you can always go to to download free photos. Anyway, here we go. So if you want to do it here, all you have to do is click Define 2. Now, if you don't see this dialog box, okay, you just go File, automate, and then you have to um, Nick Collection Selective Tool. So if you click on that, that is what would bring up this box. Now you'll see at the very, you'll see all of the different versions, the different plugins are all here. And they're kind of in the order that you'd want to use them. So Define 2 is the top one. So you'll click on that and it will open up this just here, okay? So I'm gonna quickly work through all the different things which you will see here. Okay, so let's have a quick look through here. Okay, so here we are. This is what we have just here. Basically what we need to look at is there's three different views that you've got. The regular one, which is all of the images, the split screen, which shows the before and the after, and then you have the before and the after next to each other or on top of each other. And then you can press a button in the middle. Now actually put them side by side so you can compare them. So let's leave it at this main one at first. Preview, that's obviously you toggle that on and off if you wanna see what, the, what effect is actually happening. Modes, now we'll work with that later and I'll show what this is, but this gives you a different view of the image, okay? And that's really important up here. Now the other thing is you've got your zoom button here, so you can select an area and it will zoom into that area. Um, Let's just come out of that. And then there's the hand tool to move it around. Then the next one allows you to change the background, the border. So I would recommend being in the medium gray. So let's have a quick look at this. We're gonna hit, I'm gonna hit reset so we can actually work on this. Now what happens is when you first open this, it will do it automatically. But essentially, if you watch when I hit measure noise, what it does, it analyzes the image and you can see that it's got this bar here. Now what that's doing is actually analyzing this entire image and it's gonna look at all sorts of things. It's gonna look at where the noise is and in different areas using different colors, shades, and textures. And then it's automatically gonna build a profile for this specific image and then it's gonna reduce the noise for you. So it's set on automatic right now. So essentially it will have reduced the noise. So if we just go before and after, okay? And then if we just zoom in, by double clicking, what we're gonna see here, you can see the before over this side and the after over here. The noise has been reduced dramatically. It's kind of amazing actually. And that was on automatic. So most of the time you just hit okay. 
But what I want to do with these tutorials is work through every element so that you can see how it works. The other options you've got here, so that's automatic, is manual. Okay, so with manual, essentially, you then select an area, okay? So you can say, I want you to take, build a profile from this area here. And it's then going to measure the noise in that area. So we'll do it now, analyze it. And that's what it's going to apply onto the rest of the image, reducing the noise here. We'll then apply it to what it's like on the rest of the image, okay? So let's just come back out of this. So we've added the point. We can actually delete these points, okay? So we can, but we're gonna use all of these points right now. So it's already done a great job. But now let's have a look at some other things that are really important. So we have the reduce. So this is where we can do some amazing things. So you'll see here to reduce something, so you can actually change the method. So at 100%, it means it's affecting the image 100% of reducing the noise. But what you can do is you can do the contrast noise or the color noise. Now a contrast noise essentially looks at the highlights and the shadows. So it, looks, it gets rid of the color and it just looks at the contrast. And then it looks at the tiny little flecks and changes in the contrast and reduces that, okay? And then the color is obviously the differential in color for the selected areas. So the green, it, it can look at the different tones of green. And essentially what it's doing is adding a bit of a blur to it to get rid of the noise. So I like to zoom in to actually have a look at this. So we're gonna zoom in on this area here. And then up at the top here, we're gonna go for comparison. Okay, so we can see the exact same part oh, of the image, because that for me is really important, okay? So we're actually gonna look, and we're gonna have a little bit of my face in there too. But you can see that it's actually applied a blur to this image a little bit, which allows me to do it. So what happens if we move these sliders? So if we were to move the color noise all the way up, if you watch what happens now, it's gonna add even more smoothing to it. And then the contrast of noise, even more, look how smooth that's gone now. It looks terrible, it, it looks very fake, so you wouldn't use that very often, you know, if at all. Um, so let's reset these back again to 100, okay? So we're just gonna pull those in here. Now you can actually just type in 100 on each of these. So that's that there. Now, the next thing that you can do, okay, and I, what I want to introduce to you here is the color points. Okay, so you've got color points, control points, sorry, and then you also got color ranges. So let's finish off the control points that, that we're working in. So let's add a control point. Now, there's two different big buttons down here, minus and plus, and this is really important for the entire Nick collection. So let's come back out to the full view, okay, and I want to demonstrate this. So if I hit minus, that is going to reduce the amount that it's going to affect it. And if I hit a plus, it's going to increase the amount that it's going to affect it. So let's, for example, let's do a plus, let's do a minus actually, okay? So when you take the minus control point and then you click somewhere, now, importantly, this is how the control points work, okay? And this is vital for the Nick collection. When you set it somewhere, you'll see the black dot. That's what it's referencing. And then you can change the size of it. Now, what people get confused is they think that the circle, okay, this is what it's affecting, okay? All of this round area, and I can change the size of that. That is not true. It is not a mask. Okay, the way that Nick Collection works, it's very clever, is it analyzes the image, it looks at the contrast and the tones and the textures, and it figures things out. So for example, up here, the black dot, okay, is actually in this white area. And what I tell it is, so then it analyzes the image, and it finds everything that is similar to that white area. And then I say, well, but everything inside this circle that is white is what I want it to be. So, and that's what, it, what the mask is. So to demonstrate this, we're actually going to go to color noise mask, okay? And you can actually see here, okay, so I'm gonna um, remove this control point. So it, I've got it selected, I can just hit delete. Okay, so color noise mask, what that actually does is light gray like this says that it has masked everything evenly at 100%. So I'm gonna go for minus, so if it goes to a darker color, that means that, that that's actually gonna be taken away. So it's, it's affecting the darker areas less. And if I hit a plus, 
then it's going to hit the, those areas, okay, even more. Okay, so essentially I've got that one clicked. So that's going to add to that mask. So let's just delete them because I want to just go over this the way that it works again. Watch, that's in that light section. So what it's done is I've gone everything inside the circle, which is like the light section, okay? It's actually analyzed the image and then it's made its selection, okay? Like so. And if we come back to the image, we can see that's that section that's pretty accurate. Now let's move it to the green, okay? Now when I look at in here as well, I can actually see, oh, it's done all the greens. And amazingly, watch when I go to skin tones. This is pretty amazing. It's just gonna select the skin tones. So now I can affect this and say, you know what? I want to not reduce the noise at all on my face. So I've got these all at zero. Now, let me show you actually what that means, okay? So I'm gonna reduce noise on everything, okay? Everything, quite a lot. But when I come inside here, and let's compare these images, and we'll actually, we'll zoom in, and look at the difference here. Now this is quite amazing. The greens, you can see it's reduced the, t the, the noise, but actually the skin tones that I just selected, now the noise is still there. And if I turn this off, you'll be able to see, now it's gonna smooth those skin tones for me. But if I put the control point on, it's gonna take away those, which is amazingly powerful. And what a lot of people seem to be missing with this, software, okay? So that's how you use your control points. Now let's try one other thing. So I'm gonna turn this off and now I'm gonna show you the next one which is color ranges. Now this is exactly what it said. It analyzes the color range. So let's use skin tones again, okay? So everything's set, okay? So you can have three different color tones that you can use. And what we're gonna choose is the skin tones again. So if we come in here, let's zoom in on the image and let's do a comparison, just like we did before. And now what it's going to be doing, because I turned that other point off, is everything's gone smooth. But if I take the dropper tool, okay, and I eye drop it on the skin, so now it's got the skin tones, and then if I pull these back to zero, watch what's gonna happen. Now what's happened is all of the green areas you see have, uh, have been reduced noise, yet the skin has not. So let's elevate that more. Now let's select the greens, and then we're actually gonna boost these all the way up. And now watch what happens. This has gone milky and smooth, yet I have managed to keep all of the detail on my face. Now this is just purely for demonstration purposes, so you can see the power that this really has. So now let's come out of this image, and we're gonna show you a few more things, and I'm gonna do one more demonstration at the end. Okay, so now we are inside this, okay? Let's come back to control points. And what you have is you have this little more button down here. Few things inside here. Edge preservation. Basically what that means is it'll smooth everything because it does add this little blur. But if you 100% on the edge preservation, it means that anything that there's a line, it's not gonna add any of that blur into it, okay? So if we look at this now, it's gonna have to generate this as a preview like so, it's gonna take a while. So you can see this has got like a really strong line still. If I remove the edge preservation, now that's gonna be a little bit softer, okay? Now if you're working with the JPEG that we are now, JPEGs have kind of a, a very specific artifact. So as you, it reduces quality, you get um, certain types of like banding and things. So essentially you can click on that and it will remove as much of that as it possibly can as well. And then you've got the banding, which is if you've got any lines that some cameras give, you can get rid of those too, okay? But we're not gonna do that for now, okay? Uh, we're gonna pull that out and we're gonna leave that as it is. And I want to go back into my color ranges and make sure that we have these. Oh, I just deleted one. <laughs> so we can add another one by hitting the plus button down here. I'm gonna come back in here. Sorry, I'm just gonna do this one again. I'm gonna select the skin tones and we're gonna take those to absolutely zero and make sure the greens are at 200%. Great, so now we've got all that done. All you have to do is hit okay. Like, are you ready? We're gonna hit okay. Now I wanna do a really great demonstration of how 
powerful this is by looking at the masking of this inside Photoshop. And this is why Photoshop is great over Lightroom because you can now mask these elements in and out. So what we're gonna do here, if we zoom in, we're gonna come all the way into that same area of my face because I want to show something here. And I'm gonna add a mask to this by hitting the mask button down at the bottom here and it's set to white. So it currently it's 100% okay, I've, I've done the denoise. And if I click on this, you can see with the noise, without the noise. And look at my face, hasn't now, nothing's changing. But in the green, it's changing dramatically. And I'm gonna zoom all the way in so that on my screen you can really see this. So that's the original, and now that's with. Now watch when I actually, so I'm gonna add a black brush to this and I'm gonna make sure that it's got a really hard line on this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint on this mask so I can actually delete where that was used. So watch this, when I actually paint on here, look at how dramatic the difference is here. So let's look at this, with it and without it. And I can actually paint that back on. But now let's look at this different masking area. If I actually go over this line here, if you watch, the actual face has barely changed, but yet the green has changed a lot. So let me paint over this and watch what happens. If I just paint, you can see it happening, but then when it goes on the face, barely nothing has happened. Because by using Define 2, what I was able to do was selectively reduce the noise of an image so that I can keep sharpness where I wanted it. Now that was for demonstration purposes, but you can see the power of it. So that there is really the power of Define 2, and you can use that in Lightroom and Photoshop. In Lightroom, when you hit save, it will then save it as a second image, okay? But you can see that this software really is powerful once you learn how to use it. So if you like this, please give me a thumbs up. And remember, over the next six days or whatever, I'm gonna do a full training course on all of the Nick collection by Google, all of the plugins there, okay? Anyway, this was Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com. Theme tune. Whew. Done.